the Lord this morning. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Amen. The Lord abide above the heaven and his glory above the nations. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a praise this morning. This is the day that the Lord have made our will rejoice and be glad in it. Somebody got something to shout about this morning. Somebody got something to give God the praise and glory for on this blessed Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Amen. I know one person should be shouting right now. Amen. Sister Cynthia Bradford. Amen. 
Amen. She's a grandmother. Amen. And not a baby boy this time, but she got a baby girl, a grandbaby girl. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Amen. For her and for Brother Omarion and his wife and family that the baby is healthy, the mother is healthy. And we shout and give God the glory on this blessed and sun, this blessed Sunday morning. Well, Amen. We welcome you in the Community Missionary Baptist Church where we serve the Lord with gladness and one another with excellence. Amen. If God had done something good for you this week, amen, we want you to just join in with us today. We welcome all of the CMBC family. We welcome our family from Navasota, from Houston, our family all the way down in Louisiana. Amen. Praise the Lord. North Carolina. Amen. And uh, all over, amen, that, that's been worshiping and praising God with us. We're excited about what God is doing. We're excited about what God is doing, even in this pandemic crisis. Amen. Christ still reign and rule. Amen. And we're excited about it right now. We welcome all of you, amen, in to worship with us today. Get your family members together. Get your loved ones together and tell them it is praise and worship time. It's time to celebrate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on and worship with us today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, heartaches, I had my share of a heartaches, but I'm still here. Anybody have some heartaches? Trouble, I seen my share of a troubles, but I'm still here. Play that, Keith. I've taken my lumps and a bruises, but I'm still here. Anybody ever been bruised? Loneliness. I had my share of a loneliness, but I'm still here. But listen, y'all, through it all, I made it. You made it through. Yes, I did. God kept me here. When I woke up this morning, I said, I made it. You made it through. Oh, God kept me here. I need somebody to testify this morning. Listen. Lied on. Many times I've been lied on. But I'm still here. Anybody been lied on? Burdens. I had to bear so many burdens. But I'm still here. Yes, I am, y'all. Oh, yeah. Dark days. Had my share of a dark days. But I'm still here. Yes, I am. Even now and then, disappointments. I had so many disappointments. But I'm still here through it all. Through it all, I made it. You made it through. Yes, I did. God kept me here. Right while you're in your home, tell yourself, I made it. You made it through. Oh, God kept me here. Can I tell y'all how I made it? Well, 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 it's by the grace of God. I'm still here today. He will always there, no matter what. Came my way of very prayers and help y'all in my time of a need. 
He was standing right there just to see you by me. And I made it, you made it through. Yes, I did. God kept me here. Are you glad this morning that you made it? You made it through. Woo, God kept me here. One more thing, y'all. I made it. I made it. Yeah. Yes, I made it. I'm still here. I'm still here. Listen, I had so many ups and downs, y'all, but I made it. I made it. Through the storm and rain. Yes, I made it. Heartaches and pain. I'm still here. God made a way out of nowhere, y'all. I made it. I made it. Through the ups and downs. Yes, I made it. I'm a lever to the ground. I'm still here. Won't God bring you out, y'all? I made it. Sometimes I was up. Sometimes I was down. But God lifted me up, y'all. I made it. Through the storm and rain. Heartaches and pain. I'm still here. Lift up your hands and tell God that you made it. I 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 made it. Through it all. Through it all. I'm still here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Come on, give the Lord a praise if you made it. Amen. If you made it, come on, give the Lord a praise. Amen. Once again, we welcome all of you that are joining us live on Facebook and those that are at home, the CNBC family. Amen. As Reverend Booker come and give us our scriptures and prayer, let us remember our sister, sister Dick, Vicki Bradley. Amen. And a home going of her loved one. Let us keep her lifted up in prayer. Amen. Then we're praying for the Carter family. Amen. The legendary J.C. Carter. We're praying for his family, amen. Broderick Carter, Carlos Carter, and to all of their family, we're praying for them. And then one of my good friends who grew up with me in, uh, all the way from elementary to high school, amen. Oscar Mundine, Pastor Mundine, lost his father. We're praying for him. And the many others, our chairman, we're praying for you, amen. And to all the others on our sick and prayer list, we lift you up, amen. And we give you into the hands of of all knowing and all caring, compassionate God who is able to do anything but fail. Amen. Reverend Booker is coming with our scripture and our prayer. We'll come from 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 14 through 18. It says, now we exalt you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, the weak, be patient toward all men, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ concerning you. May the Lord bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy and divine word. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, Create and make of every good and every perfect gift. Father, we come this morning, Lord Jesus, with a heart so full of thanksgiving. Lord, we have so much to be thankful to you for. Lord, thank you for loving me when I didn't even love myself. Thank you, Lord, for always protecting me, caring for me. 
build a shelter around. And Lord, we come this morning offering ourselves to you. For Lord, you're the only hope that we can depend on. So Father, we come thanking you for last night's laying down and this morning's arrival. For Lord, as we slept in the image of a dead man, kept us safe from danger seen and unseen. And Father, we want to take time out and tell you thank you. We realize we can't thank you enough. Because Lord, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. So Father, we pray that you keep us humble. Keep us fit so you can use us for your service. If we stumble, Lord, pick us up. And dust us off and put us back on the right track. For Lord, I want to be right. Lord, I want to be saved. And Lord, I want to be whole. Bless the sick all over this land and country. Lord, bless the bereaved family. Comfort them, Lord, as only you can. Father, we pray for your preach word today. Bless the shepherd you plant over here to lead and guide us. Crown his head with wisdom and knowledge and let your word go forth with boldness and clarity. And let it fall on fertile ground and take root in our lives. And one day can hear our welcome voice. Say, well done, our good and faithful servant. And Lord, when you've done all of that, Meet us down by the rippling streams of Jersey. Cross us over to the other side where there'll be no more heartaches and no more pain. These are the blessings we ask thy darling son Jesus' name. Let the church say thank God. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Booker, for that fervent prayer. Amen. And once again, we're excited to have you present with us today, my brothers and sisters, as we celebrate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We welcome all of you that are joining us live on Facebook to our community. Family, we love you. We pray that you are safe, that you are sheltered in place, and we just speak God's blessing over your homes, your bodies, your families, and your loved ones. Amen. We welcome all of you. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm excited about what God is doing in the midst of this pandemic, this new norm that we deal with. It is forcing us to stretch out and do what we've never done before. It is challenging us to be more in innovative, amen, more creative in what we do. So I'm excited about, amen, the church that is being birthed through the pandemic, amen. I'm excited about what God is doing. When I see the church being birthed, there's still people being born and born again. There are still people being saved. The church is still on her mission. The church is still, they, we still have a mandate. We still have a call. And so I'm excited about what God is doing to every preacher, pastor, every church that is standing for the glory of God. We speak God's blessing over you today. Amen. To all of my pastor friends around the nation, I love you with the love of God. And I want to say to you today, preach, pastors. Preach the word of God. Let God use you to this day. Amen. To every saint that know who God is and know what God is able to do. I challenge you to hold on to your faith and be not weary and well-doing. You shall reap if you faint not. I'm excited about what God is doing today. Amen. Give this choir a big hand as they come. To, well, this praise team a big hand as they come. Come on, praise team.
on to give the Lord a praise this morning. How many know that he will? I wish I had some folk that know that he'll fight our battle if we just keep still. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Amen. This morning, we welcome all of you. Amen. To the CMBC, Community Missionary Baptist Church, where we serve the Lord with gladness and one another with excellence. Amen. It's time for a word from the Lord. How many know that we need a word from the Lord today? Hallelujah. Join in with us. Amen. All the praise and worshipers right there in your home. Amen. Come on. Join in with us today. Amen. Lift your hands. Come on. Will you stand? I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. And I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. All over, wherever you are, help me say I live. I live my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone, and I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I Love you more than anything. Whoa, help me say I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Worship and adore you. I worship and just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. More than anything, say it again. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I worship and adore. I just wanna tell you, just wanna tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more. If you love him more than thing, right where you are, lift your voices and say it like you mean it. Say, I love you, Jesus. I love Jesus. I worship and I worship and I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. Can anybody testify this morning? Oh, you've been so good, good to me, and I love you, Jesus. I love I worship and I worship and I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. Whoa, you healed my body and you made me whole and I love you, Jesus. I worship and I worship and I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. Can I testify this morning? Whoa, you picked me up and you turned me around and I love you, Jesus. I worship and I worship and I just want to tell you.
Praise the Lord. Amen. Lord, I love you more than anything. Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. If I had a packed church here today, amen, I would ask them to sing. Lord, I love you more than anything. But guess what? You are the church, right where you are. Lord, I love you. Come on, bless the Lord. Give the Lord a praise this morning. Amen. We welcome you. Amen. Amen. We welcome you. Amen. To CMBC. Amen. Community Missionary Baptist Church where we serve the Lord with gladness and one another with excellence. That is a word from the Lord. Open your Bibles. Get your Bibles out. Get your sword out. Get your word out. Amen. Get your basic instruction before leaving earth out. Amen. And turn with me to the epistle to the Ephesians. Ephesians, the third chapter, verses 14 through 21. Amen. Thank you to this praise and worship team. Give the Lord a praise for them, these musicians. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 3, verses 14. To verse 21, amen. Ephesians 3. You got to say, I got it. You find words similar to these. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ with passive knowledge, that ye may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, According to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages and world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The grass withered and the flower faded away, but the word of our Lord remained forever. Amen. Just for a few moments this morning, I want to talk about power to make it through. Power to make it through. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a praise right there in your home to welcome you. Amen. Into this worship service this morning. My brothers and sisters, a few years ago, there was a commercial that I, I love to see. It was a commercial about the Energizer Bunny. I know somebody remember that. Amen. And the commercial basically said that in the midst of all other batteries losing their power, in the midst of all the other batteries losing their energy, it said that the Energizer Bunny just keeps on going, going, and going. You see, when they make batteries, my brother and sister, they store power or energy within the cell or inner core 
of the battery. But it's not good enough for the power to be in the battery. The power needs to flow through the battery. If it is to be of any good or do anything. And that's why batteries have a positive and negative end. Which must be aligned properly. In order for the power to flow through the battery. And thus make a flashlight work when we turn it on. Listen, my brothers and sisters, you and I, through the Holy Spirit, God has given us power through the Holy Spirit to make it through whatever situation or circumstances that we are going through in our present situation. But God just doesn't want to do a work in you. God wants to do a work. He wants to flip the switch that his power will flow through you. And that collectively as a believer in the body of Christ, amen, God's family, we may be properly aligned in order that the, his power be further displayed in us and through us. Have a good witness today. Paul writes this letter a letter to encourage, amen, the people of God. And in our text today, amen, he, he is praying uh, for the people of God to apprehend, amen, who, what they have in Christ Jesus. He wants them to comprehend, to understand the nature and the calling, amen, amen, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so this text is a prayer of apprehension, amen. He wanted them to understand the nature and the purpose of their call. So he says in the text, for this call, I bow my knees in verse 14, unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family are in heaven and, amen, in, is, in earth. Have I got a witness today? So Paul is praying for the whole family of God, whether in heaven or in earth, that they may comprehend, understand, apprehend the nature and the purpose of their call. He wanted them to understand who they have and what they have in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So in essence, he's praying that they may understand the power that God, amen, have given unto them. First of all, my first point today, my brothers and sisters, God's power, if we're going to make it through, God's power needs to be working in us. I say God's power needs to be working in us. In verse 16 through verse 17, that A part of verse 17, it says that he will grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by the Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Have I got a witness today? If we're going to power through and make it through, amen, if we're going to level up, amen, and deal with what we're dealing with today, we got to understand that God has given us power on the inside, ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost have come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, amen, both in Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of this world. Have I got a witness today? Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. If we're going to make it through, my brothers and sisters, we need God's power working in us. Have I got a witness today? Jesus said in John 15 and 5 that I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same shall bring forth much fruit, for without me ye can do 
nothing. Listen, when you are connected, when you abide in him and remain in him, Paul says you can power up through and you can produce and become fruitful and productive. Why? Because you got God's power working in us. Touch your neighbor, tell your neighbor, tell your family member, I got God's power working in me. I say, God, we got God's power working in me. See, a lot of times we want him to come up on us, amen. We want, amen, we talk about, amen, something on the outside, but no, something on the inside, amen, to hold us together. That's why some folk, amen, in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of trials and situation, they got something on the inside, amen, that give them power to make it through. I wish I had some help today. I got power to make it through, and it's God is working to work within us. That's what Paul is, is a prayer of apprehension that the people of God will understand what they have on the inside. It's that that we have on the inside that holds us together on the outside. Am I right about it? God's power is working in us according to his glorious riches, the Bible says. I said according to his glorious riches. That simply means that God do not lack the ability and power to do his work. Amen, amen. God, by his grace, have called us, but also by his grace, he have given us power. Am I right about it? Amen. The text says, amen, that God, amen, he have, according to his riches of his glory, he's praying that they may be strengthened by might, by the spirit, by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. In other words, God doesn't need a stimulus package. He don't need, he don't need to tax us. He don't have to tax us, amen, to do what he desires for us to do. God can because of his abundant riches. That's what Paul said in Philippians 4 and, and 19, amen. But my God shall supply all your needs according to what? His riches in glory through Christ Jesus. I wish I had some help for today. In other words, my brother and sister, God, God will exceed your expectation because there is no limit to the riches of his mercy and his grace. God can begin, God wants us to begin to grasp, amen, amen, what we have on the inside of us. Sometimes we forget about that in the midst of everything that's going on on the outside. We forget what's got, what we got on the inside. Amen. He gave us that peace that passes all understanding that God's and keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. In the midst of what's going on on the outside, in the midst of what's happening in the pandemic, in the midst of COVID-19, amen. God got something on the inside, amen, that causes us to not fear, amen. Amen. The war should break out. Amen. Though a storm may come, we got something on the inside because faith on the inside is not the absence of a storm on the outside. Amen. It is the presence of God in our life. Am I right about it? Ephesians 1, 1 verse 7 through 8 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches, that's the riches again, the riches of his grace wherein he have abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Amen. Ephesians 1 and 18 tells us, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Listen, my brothers and sisters, God would not come, he would not come up shorthanded. Amen. To come down this riches. Amen. In other words, God's pockets not empty. I said God's pockets are not empty. The riches of God is abundant and more than enough to accomplish his work. Amen. With, uh, within our inner being. Because Paul says in the text that we may be strengthened. Amen. With might by the spirit in the inner man. God wants us to be strengthened. Amen. By his might in the inner man. Amen. It's a spiritual thing. I say it's a spiritual thing. Amen. You can power, you can make it through because you got the power working on the inside. Am I right about it? 
God has, God has, God has invested of himself in us. God is at work within us by the Holy Ghost. If the riches of his glory are at work in us through the power of the Spirit, then nothing this world can ever do can destroy us. No height, no death, no angels, no principality, no things present, no things to come. Nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Am I right about that? Power to make it through. I'm so glad today that God has given us power to make it through. Sometimes it don't look good. I say sometimes it don't look good. But God give us power to make it through. Sometimes it don't feel good. Sometimes emotions get the best of us. Sometimes you listen to the wrong news. And sometimes we listen to too much news. And sometimes we, we get caught up, amen, on every alert, amen, every, amen, every alert notification about COVID-19. They, they give you alert every day, amen, around the clock numbers. And, and sometimes we forget to open up the Bible and get the good news. Sometimes we forget to open up the Bible and realize this ain't the first pandemic, amen, in our history. There have been some times we went through some pandemics. There have been some times we went through some diseases and some pestilence, amen. But God tells us if I, my people who are called by my name will humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive them of their sins and I will heal their land. Why? Because God got power for us to make it through. It's a power that's working on the inside, strengthening my inner man. That lets me know that when my physical strength have been depleted, God give me strength beyond the natural. God give me strength beyond this earth and it's on the inside that holds me together. Am I right about it? Uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 16 says, For this cause, for which cause we faint not, uh, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Verse 17, it says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 17, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. That simply means that God is working all things together. And even though on the outside our earthly man is perishing, on the inside our spiritual man is being renewed day by day. Tell yourself, amen, I'm a power through, amen. Amen. I got power to make it through. Why? Because God, Paul is praying that we apprehend this power, that we comprehend this power, that we understand the power that God has given us that's working on the inside of us, that give us power to make it through pandemic COVID-19. Amen. Difficult, trying situation. And every now and then you got to confess, you got to encourage yourself that I'm going to make it through. Every now and then you got to pat yourself on the back. Every now and then you got to do what David did, encourage himself in the Lord. And David understood, amen, where his source of strength and encouragement come from. Not in his situation, but he encouraged himself in the Lord. Am I right about that? 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18 says, amen, while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. They are temporary. The things that are seen are temporal. They are temporary. But the things that are not seen are eternal. Herein lies the problem and the struggle. Sometimes we're so focused on the wrong things. So many times we focus on what we see. So many times we're focused on how we feel and emotions. We feel about what everything is going on. And we begin to focus on the wrong thing. But the goal is that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. I'm already about it. Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor I'm walking by faith and not by sight. Am I right about it? Listen, the, the good news is today that God is work in us. I say God is work at work in us. I don't care how difficult it is. I don't care how bad it gets. God is at work in us. Even in this pandemic, God is at work in us. Amen. In the midst of it all, God is, amen. God is raising up a people that will praise him in spite of. 
God are raising up a people who know who he is in spite of what we're going through. Am I right about it? Amen. God is raising up a people that don't mind shouting and praising him before the answer comes. Am I right about it? Even now and then, you got to have this thing called and about to praise. I'm going to praise God for what he's about to do. Not what he's done. I'm going to praise him for what he's uh, about to do. Am I right about it? Amen. Why? Because God is working to work in us. Amen. God wants to do more than just transform our lives from the inside. God's power is working in us in order that God's power will work through us. That gets me to our second point, amen. Praise the Lord. I'm so blessed, amen. My daughter figured out a way, amen. Now she can just put my points up, on, amen, on the screen. That, you know, when you, when you go back and watch it on Facebook, amen. Get the Lord to praise for her, amen. Those at home, amen, give us a shout out, amen. Praise the Lord. Sometimes I get home, she on the computer working on things and talking to me, amen. I just go to sleep, amen. <laughs> amen. She's talking about what she learned, amen. But God's power is working in us that his power may work through us, amen. And that's in that, that, that B part of verse 17, Ephesians 3 and 17, verse the B part says that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, what is the length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ with passing knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. In other words, that you've been rooted and grounded in love. God's power working through us, amen, that we are rooted and grounded in love. Rooted in love is a picture of love growing and maturing like a plant. Separated from the roots, a plant dies. Connected to the roots, a plant has stability and strength and the ability to grow. Connected to the roots of plant and nourished to grow and produce fruit. Amen. Look what Jesus said to his disciples. Amen. I am the vine, you are the branches. He did buy to me and I am him. The same bringing forth much fruit. Why? Because you are connected. Uh, when you are connected, that's the power of God working through you. Uh, but when you are disconnected, the power can't work through you. Ah, see, but when you're connected, you be like the energi energizer bunny. Ah, uh, you keep going, going, and going. Even though times get tough, you just keep on going. Even though it get difficult, you just keep on going. Even though you get sick, you just keep on going. Even though you lose your job, you're going to keep on going. Even though people walk away from you, you just keep on going. Why? Because you're connected. Why? Because, yeah, something is working on the inside that'll show up on the outside. That's why in the midst of the storm, you can say like Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, and I'm still going to bless his name. Ah, you can be like the psalm that says in the 34th number of psalm, I will bless the Lord at all time. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. In other words, I'm going to keep on praising him. I'm not going to stop praising him because the storm get rough. I'm not going to stop praising him because the hills get, yeah, a little steep for him. I'm going to stop praising him because I get tired sometime. Be not weary and well-doing. You shall reap if you Faint not. Am I right about that? The psalmist says in the first number of Psalm, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sitting, nor sitting in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. That simply means that when you meditate in it day and night, then that that you meditate in gets in you. Y'all can hit me today. Uh, you know how you meditate on something, next thing you know, you're doing it. Come on, y'all tired. You're getting quiet of me today. Because when you meditate on it, it simply means that you roll it over and over and over again. You just don't haphazardly uh, read the word of God, but you meditate in it. Uh, uh, you meditate in the word of God. And he said, because of that, you shall be like a tree. That bring it forth is fruit. That, that's what see what's in you gonna come out. That's gonna bring forth is fruit. That's the evidence. Uh, that's the evidence. Amen. Bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Ah, uh, 
Uh, why? Because you root it, you establish in it, you establish in love. The text says, establish, amen, is a picture of a building standing on a solid foundation. When you establish, that means that you're on a solid foundation. Ah, uh, you just don't go to church, amen. You got church in you. You just not in church, but church is in you. So a lot of us we go to church and we join, we we are part of a church, but the church not in us. Y'all quiet me today. But when you have been established and written and grounded, you are you are stable on a firm foundation. Jesus said in Matthew the seventh chapter, verse twenty-four to twenty-eight, "Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I shall liken them to him a wise man that built his house upon a rock. The rains ascended, the winds blew, and the flood came and beat upon that house, but that house stood. Why? Because it was founded upon a rock." Then it goes on saying, "Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, need, see, listen, both of them he, he, heard the word of God, but only one of them did the word of God. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and don't do with them, shall be likened unto a foolish man that went to church, sang in the choir, that preached in the pulpit, ah, but did not live the word of God. Y'all quiet me today. Heard the word of God." Preached the word of God, shouted the word of God, but did not practice what he preached. Did not live the word of God. And he said the same thing going to happen because when it rains, it rains on the just as well as the unjust. He said the rains came, the winds blew, amen, and the floods came and beat upon that house, and that house fell because it was founded upon the sand. I wish I had some help here today. Rooted and established in love with power, he wants us to grasp um, the weight and the depth of Christ's love. It simply means he still loves us. In spite of what you're dealing with here today, he still loves us. In spite of what we're going through here today, he still loves us. Yeah, and, and you got to have that on the inside because when you have it on the inside, you can power through. Sometimes we thank God don't love us because of what we're dealing with. Because what the hurt and the pain and the stuff that we go through in life, I'm here to tell you that God still loves you. I say God still loves you. And Paul wants them to grasp, amen, to be written and established in that fact. One thing I know for sure, I'm saved. One thing I know for sure, he loves me. I'm established on that. So you can't get me off that. I don't care what I'm going through. I know that he loved me. I'm rooted. I'm grounded. I'm established in the love of God. And the love on the inside shows up on the outside. Have I got a witness for today? It says, so I pray that you've been rooted and grounded in the 17th, 19th verse, through 19th verse. Amen. May have power together with all saints. Power together with all saints. To grasp how wide and long and how deep. How high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, uh, that you may be filled with the measure of the fullness of God. In other words, you're rooted and established with power to act. Power is to flow through us in order to touch somebody. Rooted in love, which produces fruit. Ah, uh, that nourishes our lives. Established in love, we stand upon a foundation that welcomes others into the security of Christ's love. How many know that God's love, Christ's love, is all-encompassing? I said it's all-encompassing. John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have ever lasting life. Now, now there's a difference between God loving us and so loving us. God not only loved us, he so loved us. Moved him, amen, into action. Because any love that will not act ain't love at all. I don't care about that talk love and lip service, amen. Lip service, I said this week, is no service, amen. I say lip service is no service. I don't care about, but folks that they love you, but when they see you in need, and they don't come and check on you, amen, they don't really love you. Y'all going to help me here today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to grasp how long is the love of God. The love of Christ. God's, God's love is not like sands running through the hourglass that will soon run empty. 
God loving Christ endures throughout eternity. Am I right about it? Listen, my brothers and sisters, Paul says in Romans 8, uh, 38 through 39, for I'm convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons or principal, neither things present nor things to come or any other power nor height nor depth nor any other cre creature or creation shall be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God is working through us that we might be filled with the measure of all the fullness of God. Am I right about it? Listen, the more we are filled with God, the less we are filled with ourselves. I say the more we are filled with God, the less we are filled with ourselves because sometimes we get full of ourselves. Sometimes we think we're better than what we are. Sometimes we think we're farther than what we are. Sometimes we think because we're better than somebody else, we're so filled up, amen, with arrogance and ego, e e e e our egos, amen, inflated, amen. Sometimes we think we're all that in a bag of chips, amen. And every now and then, God have to bring us down to remind us that we haven't yet made it. Am I right about it? Just because we're better than somebody else don't mean that we are perfect. Am I right about it? Amen. The more you're filled with God, the less you're filled with ourselves. The more we are filled with ourselves, the less we are able to love other folk. Am I right about it? We're not simply to have head knowledge about God's love. Instead, ours is to be a love that surpasses knowledge. In other words, we ought to know the love of Christ experientially. Amen. If and now and then you want to know the love of Christ, amen. You got to go through some stuff, amen. You got to love those that don't love you back. You got to love your enemy. You got to do good to them to hate you. And you got to pray for them that despitefully use you. Then you got to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Ah, oh, because great is your reward in heaven. Y'all going to help me today? If you really want to love like Jesus, love, you got to love folks that don't love you back. Ah, you got to love till it hurts. You. It, it's got to be a sacrificial love. It got to be a selfless love. It's got to be a serving love. If you ever want to love like Jesus, that passed it all knowledge, amen, you love folk that don't love you back, that you know that don't like you. That's that power working through you. You say you can't do it. Well, the Holy Ghost give you power to do it. That's the power working through you. You're able to comprehend. You're able to work, amen, together, amen, to power through, amen, and it'll show up on the outside. Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm powering through. Uh, a power to make it through. Listen, my brother and sister, Paul said in Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things. Through Christ with what strengthened me. I can do all things through Christ which do what? That strengthened me. Paul was dealing with some, some stuff. Dealing with a thorn in the flesh. And so he said in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. He says, and he said unto me. He kept asking God to remove this thorn. Remove this messenger of Satan that buffeted me. Remove this infirmity out of my flesh. But God told him three times, my grace is sufficient. Y'all going to hit me today? He said in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. And Paul understood that. He said, well, most gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. In other words, Paul realized he's able to power. God give him power to make it through because God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. Sometime in the midst of our weakness, amen, that's when we call upon God and we begin to rely upon God's strength to make it through. Because the reality is, amen, a lot of us think we can make it without him. But every now and then something will hit us, amen, that we know that we can't make it without the help from the Lord. The psalmist says in the 124th number psalm, if it had not been for the Lord on our side. May Israel say, if it had not been the Lord on our side. He gives us power to make it through. Listen, God is working in us to make us like Jesus. He is working through us in order to love in order for us to love like Jesus. 
and that the power may flow out of our lives and that we may love everybody the same way he loved us. Now I'm getting to my last point here, Paul. Amen. Not only talked about power to make it through, but the power that's working in us. Not only did he talk about the power that working through us. Uh, but bro Brother Jimmy, the last point is God's power over, it, oh, is overflowing us. Oh, Y'all ain't going to help me. I said God's power is overflowing us. Uh, it says here in the 20 and 21st verse, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all nations, throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Paul ends his prayer of apprehension, apprehension with praise and give the doxology. In other words, he give God the glory and he wants us to be encouraged to know that we got power to make it through. And that power to make it through is, amen, the Holy Ghost working in us. And the Holy Ghost working in us gives us power to work through us. And that is the fruit, that is the evidence, that is the love of Christ strengthening us in our inner man that we may love others the same way he loves us. Am I right about it? Oh, my brother and sister, I wish the church would comprehend the power that God is working in us and through us. Something on the inside of you ought to cause you, amen, or cause you to tell yourself, I'm going to make it out of this. I'm going to make it through this. Amen. I'm going to rise above what I'm going through. And Paul is giving them the doxology, amen, of this matter. God is the God of the overflow. I said God is the God of the overflow. He is the God of more than enough. He is the God of abundance. He is the God, amen, uh, that, we, that, 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 that wants to bless us. And whenever God blesses us, I'm here to tell you, amen, he, it overflows us. Uh, whenever God blesses us, he just doesn't bless us with enough. He bless us with more than enough. Am I right about it? And so Paul closes, amen, with a doxology by giving God the glory and by giving God the praise. And in the midst of his doxology, Paul goes on and he wants to encourage the body of Christ. He wants to encourage you and me. He wants us to realize and remember the power that's working in us. It's also a power that's working through us. And not only the power that's working in us and through us, but it is, it is the power that overflowing us. And that's why David said, my cup runneth over. He anointed my head with all, and my cup runneth over. I wish I had some help here today. Whenever God blesses us, it overflows us. And you see, as Paul get ready to close, uh, he give us the principle in the text. Uh, because it closes in verse 20 by saying, Now unto him who is able to do uh, exceedingly abundantly uh, above all that we could ask or think uh, according to the power that worketh in us. Uh, ain't the Lord all right? I say you need to know who him is now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I could ever ask or imagine I say God is able I say God is able to do anything but fail can I tell you who Paul is talking about he's talking about the one who is able to open up the Red Sea He's talking about the one that allowed the children of God to walk over on dry ground. He's talking about the one, I say he's talking about the one that led them in the wilderness 
for 40 long years. He's talking about the one that fed them with manna, manna from on high. He's talking about the one that gave them water, water from a rock. He's talking about the one. I say he's talking about the one that told Israel to march around the wall, the walls of Jericho, for seven days. And don't say a word. But on that seventh day, begin to blow your trumpet, begin to blow your horn, and begin to shout. And when you shout, the walls will come down. Ain't the Lord all right? I wish I had somebody that knew how to shout. And when you begin to shout, the walls will come down. Ain't the Lord all right? Now unto him uh, that is able to do uh, exceedingly, uh, abundantly, uh, above all uh, I could ever ask or think. Uh, ain't the Lord all right? I got to close him now. Uh, I got power, uh, power to make it through uh, because the God I serve, uh, he's able. Uh, anybody know he's able? Uh, he's able. Uh, to make a way somehow, and he all right. He made a way in a lion's den. He made a way in the fiery furnace. He made a way on a hill called Calvary. They stretched him wide. They hung him high. He died. Anybody know he died for your sins and mine? But thanks be to God, he didn't say dead. It was early Sunday morning. He got up out of the grave with all power in his hand. Power to make it through. Now you need to touch yourself and tell yourself, I'm going to make it through. Because the power within us and the power that is within us it's working through us. And then, listen, when the power is overflowing you, uh, you, people will recognize it's something about you because your cup is running over. You got so much love until it blesses somebody else. Hallelujah. He's able to overflow. He's able to open the windows and pour you out a blessing that shall not have room enough to receive it. Hallelujah. He's able to open. How many know that he's able to overflow you? Hallelujah. 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 Listen, 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 listen. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain, let it rain, can I say it again, open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain. Let it rain. Come on, help me, church. Say, open, open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. That's all I want you to do now, Lord, is open. Let it rain, let it rain, that's all I want you to do now, Lord, is open, let it rain, oh my, 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 my. Listen, in the midst of the pandemic, I can tell myself, 
I can feel the rain. Lord, I feel the rain. I can feel the rain. Can you feel the rain? I can feel the rain. Tell yourself, it's raining. Lord, it's raining. It's raining. It's raining. Because I got power to make it through, I tell myself, I'm coming out. Lord, I'm coming out. I've been down too long. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming through. Thank you, Jesus. I'm coming through. You've been good to me. I'm coming through. I'm I'm coming through, I'm coming through, I'm coming through, I'm coming through, I'm powering through. You can't stop me, I'm powering through. Thank you for your grace and mercy, I'm powering through. I'm powering through. It's raining. Lord, it's raining. It's raining. It's raining. Open, open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain, oh my. My, my, my. That's all I want you to do now, Lord, is open. Ooh, oh. Let it rain. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Amen. Praise the Lord right where you are. Amen. Praise the Lord, right where you are. Power to make it through. This prayer of apprehension that the people of God will understand and grasp the enormity of the power that's working in us, the power that's working through us when you're rooted and grounded, established on a firm, fixed, and stable foundation. Amen. You can still produce even in a difficult situation. You can still be blessed even in the economy that we're dealing with today. Hallelujah. God can still make a way out of no way in spite of what we're dealing with. God can raise up a remnant of people who know who he is through the storm and through the rain. You power through because God has given you power to make it through. And I want to share with you here today that God has given you power to make it through. You can make it. Amen. Get up in the morning and carry it yourself. Amen. It's all about discipline. How many of y'all know it's all about discipline? It's all about consistency. And the more you do it, amen, then all of a sudden, amen, uh, your body begins to line up with your mind. And y'all with me, amen. So your body begins to line up, amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord with your mind, amen. And God give you power to make it through, amen. The power that's working, that's the power in us, the power through us, and the power that is overflowing us. I can feel the rain. Lord, I feel the rain. Deep down, I can feel the rain. I can feel the rain. It's like fire shut up in my bones. Lord, I feel the rain. I wish you can feel the rain. Feel the rain, open, open the floodgates 
peace of heaven. Let it rain, oh my, 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 my. Come on, give the Lord a praise, amen. Thank you all, amen. Thank you, praise the Lord. We pray that you've been helped, that you've been blessed, you've been encouraged by this word today. Thank you to all of my family and CNBC family for joining us today. Thank you, amen. To my family and friends and loved ones from Houston and Navasota, amen. Louisiana, amen. Brother Davis, thank you for joining us, amen. Amen. Happy birthday to Sister Laverne, amen. Happy birthday to Sister Abby Barron, amen. To, uh, uh, to Brother uh, Anthony McCollum had a birthday as well. And to all the birthdays, amen. If I didn't mention your name, those are some that just let me know it was a birthday to my cousin David McGinty. His birthday. Praise the Lord. We praise the Lord for all those birthdays. We love all of you with the love of God. Listen, this is a very critical hour that we're living in today. I'm asking all of the people, amen, amen, to vote like your ancestors died for it. Amen. Get out and vote. Amen. I'm going to tell you who to vote for, but get out and vote. Amen. Especially on the local ele elections, amen, it's very important that you get out and vote, amen. It's very important, so I want to carry it to you, amen. Register if you haven't registered, amen. For those who need mail-in ballots, amen. Don't worry about what's going on, amen, uh, amen, on the, on the federal level, amen. You just do your civic duty, amen. And then let God do the rest, amen. Praise the Lord. Our hope is in the Lord, amen. Praise Lord. I say our hope is in the Lord, Amen. You just do your part, amen. When Jesus got to Lazarus' grave, he says, amen, roll away the stone, amen. Now, he could have rolled away the stone himself, amen, but he told them to roll away. There's something you can do for yourself. Y'all quiet a minute, amen. Amen. There's something you can do for yourself, amen. And God will be right there. Thank you all once again for joining with us. Join with us on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, amen, for our prayer and Bible study, amen. Join with us. Thank you for always joining in with us. Amen. Thank you for your, uh, your service. Thank you for your sacrifice. Amen. You could go to many other sites. and Amen. But you, you have chosen to be a part of our family virtually. And I love you and I thank God for you. We love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. Till we meet together again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God our Father, we bless you and thank you once.